Hello, George here. I just want to give a quick update about the situation in Iran uh, and, and the United States. Uh, firstly, uh, I want to point out that this is not uh, the burning fuse that I'm talking about, which is part of the kick, uh, countdown to the Psalm 83 war. The reason for this is that Iran remains a major military power after Psalm 83 because it has to be around along with other countries. Uh, Iran is the Persia mentioned in the Bible. And Iran is present uh, in the Ezekiel War as a major military power to attack Israel. So if there's going to be any confrontation between the United States and Iran, it's not going to cause the uh, severe disablement of Iran's conventional uh, armed forces. And certainly any major war between U.S. and Iran would involve this. So what is the reason for the rhetoric around the Strait of Hormuz, which is that narrow patch of water between the United Arab Emirates and Iran. It's mainly because the lot of oil trade flows through that and Iran has threatened to close it. So to understand why this is a threat to the United States, not only economically but militarily, we need to understand the st geopolitical strategy of the United States in regards to the Middle East and to the Asia, into Asia in general. Uh, the United States the military strategy in terms of overall high-level strategy is to control all of the bodies of water that, that, that where, where uh, economic trade flows. That way, the United States has the ability to blockade any nation and to basically put a stranglehold on its trade. The United States does not want any major land power to emerge in Asia or, or even in Europe. So it uh, plays off powers against each other. M uh, the reason, the chief political reason for the United States support of Israel is not because of some uh, biblical standpoint. It's because Israel is a counter power to the other members of the region. Therefore, by maintaining Israel as a power, it allows the other uh, nations to be held in check. This is the similar logic between uh, supporting Saddam Hussein, for example, in Iraq. Now, Iran's conventional forces, although numerous and powerful, has a lot of experience in fighting a war against Iraq and losing. So, uh, and you know this as well, that if you remember from the Iraq war, that the Western technology and military techniques have been very effective in combating uh, a country like Iraq which Iran could not defeat. Therefore, the Iran conventional forces, although numerous, are weak because they're not experienced in uh, the types of warfare that the United States uh, is, is experienced in. So in any, definitely in any confrontation with the United States and Iran, the United States would be uh, victorious and Iran would not be a major power. However, this is not happening. So very likely, what's going to be what's going to be taking place now is um, a lot of verbal uh, posturing to avoid a conflict. In the event that the Psalm 83 war kicks off, this could spark a move by Iran to attack Israel. It could do so through its proxies in the Middle East that are close to Israel already. These are the terrorist organizations that have been uh, warring with Israel uh, for many years now it would very likely attack uh, U.S. interests in Iraq. However, and maybe close the Strait of Hormuz, and this could trigger the United States disabling uh, the, uh, the Iranian Navy, maybe, or maybe trying to reopen the Straits. The United States would not engage in a major conflict with Iran uh, to destroy Iran. It would engage in a major conflict with Iran simply to open the Strait of Hormuz and to reestablish the trade routes in order to protect the worldwide economy. It is possible that it, one of the effects of the Psalm 83 war would be to destabilize the overall economy and this would cause the fall of the United States through um, some sort of economic crisis, in which case Iran would be left as a major regional power but would be held in check by Iraq and the other Arab countries until the time of the Ezekiel War. George signing off.